I'm gonna need to. I'm gonna need to write. I'm, I'm gonna need to write the notes, right? No, and, and I'm gonna give you guys the truth. I'm gonna give you guys not only not only the SPL, but also the business side of it because the business side of it is where the real brain dish shit happens. But you know, we'll keep it like we'll keep it simple. All right. All right. All right. SPL starts the right way. There is a lot of love for the game. And there's, and there's a lot of people that are love playing this game competitively. So they started a, a tournament where the top teams earn their spot. They earn their first, you know, si or, I don't know, those eight spots. Before it used to be European, North American. They used, and then they had Latin, Ch you know, China. They used to have uh, Asia. I'm not sure if it was all of Asia, but they had their own sections. And then for Worlds, everyone would get together. Same thing as Dota, which is genius. Obviously, Hyrus oh, Hyrus sold off their rights to you know to Latin, off Latin America and Asia. Obviously, very wrong, but whatever they did, which made the game smaller. Which made the, so then it, at that point it was only North America and Europe, right? And that was the, the thing for season two, three, four, you know, for a while. After like season four or five, at season five, um, they started to pick the team so this is what their th their thought process was right if we're gonna have sponsors in, in in the organization um if we're gonna have sponsors we can't be changing teams all the time because the sponsors change and then they're you know we can't be it, it, it'll just mess up the, the the money side of things my argument the whole time this was happening as a player as a streamer as someone for the game i said don't don't do that. Stop making this like League of Legends. This, you don't have the player base nor the money to make this into like a a, a, a a league where everyone moves to Atlanta. That makes no sense. You need to make tournaments with a lot of funding and let the best teams play for it through Europe and NA where they come together. Top teams play against each other for land for a big prize. That is true competition. But they changed it so teams teams would have to come to uh, Atlanta and be handpicked they're handpicked, no, not played for, handpicked by high res according to their, uh, you know, how they played before in the SPL. So, for ad for example, Adapting was a back-to-back back -back, back -back, uh, SP uh, Worlds winner, so he's obviously going to get picked up. And then whatever team is around him is going to get picked up. That's fair, right? Um, so that's that makes sense, but it doesn't, right? Because it's it eventually going to kill the league. It's going to choke the league, correct? Because now what's going to happen is now you're picking only these same players over and over and over and over again because how are you going to pick anyone else because you've never seen them before? So you, you only have these pool of players to pick from, correct? So how does anyone that wants to come up and play competitive have a chance? They have zero opportunity, which takes away from the competition, which takes away from aspiring to be a professional smite player. It's not me. It's just in general. When you, when you play Dota and you want to play Dota, you have a chance, just like the equal chance as everybody else. No, but in Smite, it's about who you know, because if you know adapting, for example, I'm not saying adapting, but if you know adapting, for example, and he believes you're good, the chances are you're going to get in, because if he thinks you're good enough and he's going to get picked to, that, to, uh, to get into the league, then he, it gets in, you know, he's going to get in. So you're going to see the same players over and over and over. And then they made a league called the SCC or the Challenger Cup or whatever the fuck they want to call it. They change the name every year. This was three years ago. I explained to Cooper saying, hey, man, and this is what they did. They did. They made it where the league was um, they, the league was $10,000 for the salary for a year in the SCC, which is the Challenger Cup, whatever the name of it, the league under SPL. You make $10,000 throughout the year, regardless of placement, mind you, regardless of placement, you have a chance to make more and get to the lands if you win first place. So then, by doing so, I told, you know, Cooper many times, three years ago when they first started this, this doesn't make any sense. I don't care about the $10,000. What we care about is making it to the pro league, having a chance. That's what makes us grind. That's what makes us win. You ever listen to the SPL players? What do they want? They want to win fucking worlds. That's what's important. That, as a, comp as a competitor, that's what you play for. That's what you grind for. That's what you do. Right, so they made this league like a like a baby league. Like, oh, play Smite. Don't give a fuck what you do. Make your ten thousand dollars, and obviously everyone treated it like that. 
because that's the only way you can treat it. There is no way you can invest all your time to be the best SEC team if you have no opportunity of making it to the Pro League, correct? So, relegations has been re uh, removed for about three years now, and this is when it started, this league, and then, so then, SPL has been the same players over and over, but that's not the players' fault. They do deserve to be there, they do have the talent, they did put in the grind, but... You must earn it. That is the only form of true competition. So for two years, they made the excuse that they cannot change the teams because of sponsors, correct? Because if the sponsor changes, right, for example, Cloud9 sponsors <clears throat> Final Case team, right? And they're paying them 45K salary a year. If they get relegated, then then what happens there? There's a contract. There's a lot of money involved, right? It kind of fucks up everything. So that's why they choked the teams to eight teams handpicked. So that was their excuse. But then they had a lot of problems with the sponsors. You know, Smite is in a weird spot. Why is Smite in a weird spot? It's a smaller game. So putting a lot of, like, for sponsors to put in a lot of money, usually they have to fuck over the teams in any way or form to make their money back. That's called business right? You're trying to get your return on your investment. So in Smite, the return on their investment usually means you're going to fuck over your, your players in any way or form and try to make as much money off of them. And when Smite's not giving enough money, you're, you know, you're going to have to fuck with your players to try to juice out whatever they can. Okay. So with that being said, two years down the road, when they've already done this league like this, this many times, they say no more sponsors. Sponsors no longer own the spot. So before, the sponsor used to own the spot. Imagine a sponsor owning a spot that has no fucking clue about Smite. So they're like, hey, Cloud9, here's a spot in, in Smite. We pay you this much money. This is how much money you make from owning the spot. And then they're like, okay, which players are good? Um, well, this guy used to be a pro. This guy used to be a pro. This guy was a world champion. And that's how they picked their teams. Imagine. Their pro league revolved around dudes that never played Smite picking their teams. That's a big problem. But obviously, nobody knew. And the same, you know, very the famous players, you know, got their chance again. Um, got their chance again and played again and over and over and over. Um, and that was the case for a long t uh, for for two years. And then to, they realize that, yo, this is a problem. This doesn't make any sense. This is wrong, right? And then they took out the sponsors this year and said, look, we're going to give them team names. And I said, okay, this is perfect. You should definitely now make a tournament, make a tournament where you have to earn these spots. And, and second of all, it should have never been in Atlanta, especially with COVID. Why would you do that? Business-wise makes no sense. Yes, you get a couple cute videos of whether they like cats or dogs or, or like, you know, Cocoa Puffs or Lucky Nut Char or like Lucky Charms. Who gives a fuck about that? People want competition. And so they brought it back. They brought it back where they, back in Atlanta for some random reason. And now a lot of people left that are, are probably still the best players in the game left the league because it doesn't make sense for them. And, um... And they still gave out the teams, they still gave the spots to the teams with no sponsors. So you made excuse that the sponsor was the problem, but now where there's no sponsors, you still pick the same amount of teams. Obviously, you're going to pick the same fucking players that you saw in the last two years because you picked them last time. How could you say, I'm going to pick up Griff or pick up this guy or pick up this guy if you never gave them the opportunity to ever play? So you don't even know how good they are. You never ha you never, you're not giving anyone a chance. That's not competition. When there's no opportunity, there's no competition. It's fucking basic math. Correct? Okay. But another problem. So the problem is, is that, so that's why people call it the friends league because you're not earning your spot. But while that being said, while that being said, these players in the SPL are the greatest, right? They are, but there's other players that are at that same level, but because they're not friends or close with those or, or given a chance to play with those high level of players, you never know how good they are. Paul, nobody knew who he was. He joined the SPL and won back-to-back -back world champions. That is a fucking blatant example. So was Sam. Sam was I was in the SPL before Sam. 
then Sam joined, then he won a world champ, and then he joined the, the next best team and then won second place. It's obvious, Cooper. It's fucking obvious. So look at Jake. Jake was a nobody. If anything, I thought he was a shitter. I sometimes still think he's a shitter, but he still proves himself, and that's what you can't take away from players. He's proving it with an opportunity. He's proving it. When no, you don't have an opportunity to prove it, then nothing else matters. Do you guys understand where I'm coming from? So, I'm not saying it's a friends league. It's not any fair. I don't get an opportunity to play. No, I'm not saying that. I'm saying it's not about it's not about who deserves a pass. This is a problem with you guys. Uh, you guys think it's deserved. Nobody deserves anything. You have to fucking earn it. It's competition. LeBron and the Lakers wins wins uh, the the uh, wins a ring. And do you think he just he just he just goes into the playoffs first seed? No, you gotta earn it. You gotta have a best the best win ratio, the win loss ratio, and then you have to prove it again in the playoffs. You don't just you don't just get it. You have to earn it. So my problem is with Cooper. This has been the same shit for three years. You have to change it. Stop thinking about giving players a salary. You know, stop fuck the salary. Make, get, put the money into a funding of a tournament, bring it back to an online phase, and give our people opportunity. Opportunity brings great competition, and with great competition comes a lot of people watching. More than a ton of people watching, and with a lot of people watching, people make money. That's the way it fucking works. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. I mean, I'm sure you guys have a lot of questions, but I'm about to play in this first level, this first uh, little the first game with my team. I haven't played with them in a while. No, but that's the problem. People say, yo, but Layers doesn't deserve a spot, or Inbound doesn't deserve a spot, or ML doesn't deserve a spot. That's lies. Nobody deserves anything in the SPL right now. Do it, Griff. Do it, Griff. I'm going to finish I'm gonna finish up right now. Nobody deserves anything. You have to earn it. If, in, all right, if all these players think, that, if all these SPL teams think they're better than, these other, than the other players, just prove it. That's all you got to do. If you're so much better than us, just prove it. And we should have a chance. Cooper should put a tournament where the top teams join and it chokes out the comp. It brings the competition to the top 16 and then you play for that spot. If you lose, you go fucking home. If you win, you earn the spot. And now for business side of things. Now for business side of things. Business, right? Money-wise. Cooper, this is not League of Legends. This is not League of Legends. We don't have 500,000 concurrent viewers. That's horseshit. Stop making us move to Atlanta to play this game. It doesn't make sense. Stop trying to give us salaries. Make us play for a lot of money. Make, grab all the salaries and put it into tournaments across every region for, for lands. And then make us all come together in, in Atlanta for Europe versus NA because that's all that's left of us. You can bring Latam as well. I know visas are hard, but you figured it out for the fucking houses. So figure it out for these lands. And... Give everyone an opportunity, and with that opportunity comes a lot of uh, the, people are gonna watch. Like it's so simple to me. I, it's so obvious to me. I feel um, it's been a long time. I think a lot of people don't complain for one reason: they don't want to lose their spot. If you're in like my position right now, right, you'd be stupid to talk out like this because that means I'm never gonna get a chance. Because it, the way it sounds is that I'm talking out against all the players that are in the SPL right now, which is not what I'm doing, not at all. But people will perceive it that way. And that means this, I'm gonna cut, I'm gonna cut fucking all my bridges with all the friends that I've made over the years and played against, you know? But I could give a fuck. Why? Because I made enough money off my stream and, I, and I'm okay in my, you know, I'm fine. Like I don't need to be playing the SPL to make money. But other people do, and other people have this aspiration, so they're scared to speak out, even though they feel the same way as me. They DM me, the same players you watch, a lot of them, they're complaining competitive around. They DM me, they're like, bro, I appreciate you talking out, man. But I know they won't say it because they're scared to cut ties with the people that own the spots. And as sad as that sounds, it's the fucking truth. So, I mean, you know... What it is what it is. It's gonna, it's not going to change until Cooper to, Cooper does something. And unfortunately, Cooper is someone that never has like Cooper went from an admin to to someone that 
owns the league, like someone that manages and does everything for the league. In my opinion, he wasn't qualified to do that, and he's made a lot of mistakes. And it's okay to make mistakes, but you got to assess it. You got to change for what's right. And like, you know, I, I think he, and on, on, his, on his side, but it, it, it's, it's the truth. Let me tell my boys. So, so back, back to the beginning, right? Back to the beginning of the same question, and then we'll get to the Venn thing. <sighs> Excuse me. Back to the beginning. Is the SPL a friends league? In the perspective of the true competition, yes. In the perspective of are these players there? Are some of these SPL players that are there not supposed to be there? No, I disagree. Every player in the SPL right now, team for team, player for player, deserves to be there. They deserve it. The only problem is you have to earn it, right? Fuck what deserving. You have to earn it. So that is the problem, right? So it just goes back to earning it. It goes back to relegations. It goes back to the same single problem. So it's not the player's fault. It's the management fault. So it's truly Cooper's fault. Cooper's probably like going to tell me something or maybe kick me out of the SEC. I don't know. I don't give a fuck. But it's the truth. So I want, as for you guys that are true fans of Smite competitive, you know, competitive Smite, to really understand what's happening. So, you know, hope you guys, you know, enjoyed that. I mean, like I said, I, I just, I, I just see, I, I talked out about this three years ago um, when it first started. I got attacked on Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, everything because, you know, I said what was right. And then Smite turned their back against me, you know, started attacking me. So a lot of people said, you know, said it thought, felt like it was okay to attack, you know, because Smite did it. Once once the company does it, it may, it's just like, oh, fuck that guy, you know? So, like I said, we go back to square one. I, I still stand by what the fuck I say three years later. It's the same thing. So, you know, it is what it is. I got to pick my character here. I'm going to get, I'm going to practice with my team. Uh, today we're doing a little Smite Prime, Jing Ten. Four. Wait, is which one's for me? Trolls. I almost picked Jington. So yeah, like I said, I hope you guys really, you know, learned about a lot of it. Um, you know, it's just just a, a lot of lack of information as well. I think on on Hyra's side. Like you have to explain these things to your community. I think they just say they just say like uh, you know they just keep it. They just don't. They're just not transparent. Um, they're just not transparent, and it sucks because the way I you know the way I say it and the way and the truth is it makes it seem that the pro players don't deserve that spot, but they are great players. It's just the beauty about MOBA and the beauty the beauty about the beauty about teamwork is. Even if you have the best players, sometimes it doesn't matter how good your team is because you don't have the chemistry, right? Like, is inbound layers and uh, to the bottom teams right now good enough to be pro? Of course they are. Of fucking course they are. But sometimes another team has better Thanks chemistry the and they're better than them. And you would never know that. Always appreciate when you tell us how it really is. Yo, I love you guys. Y'all appreciate that four months, Havix. And or or but look, but if layers and inbounds team destroyed the other team that was trying to take their spot, then you feel like damn, they deserve that. Even if they're losing to every SPL team, they deserve it. They fucking deserve it. So like that's the way it should be, you know. But like I said, it probably won't change until everybody starts talking about it. As long as it's just me for now, nothing will happen. Either way, love you guys. Nice to see everybody again. Let's get into this my prime action. I haven't played in a while, so let's see what happens. This is game one. We had a buy. 
how can we change this? Everybody has to talk out about it. Everybody has to speak up. Not just me. Alright, let's get into this game. Let me get on.